So we're diving right back in to Way the Hunter again today, and it's just been so nice to actually have time to play the game again. After a pretty extended break where we just didn't have the time to put in, I've really been enjoying just getting back out here and exploring the map, and it's also nice that we're finally to a point where we're not just constantly trying to work on getting credits. We've got everything taxed that we shot recently, and we have about an 8,000 credit excess. So what I wanted to do today was try to explore a little bit of the areas that we've not really been to that much. So the main one I'm looking at is the south center of the map. You can see a bunch of dark area there that we've not explored. And I just want to kind of wander down through here and see what we can find. And it looks like we'll be starting off with a herd of whitetail. Now the question is, looking at this four star mature, is this the herd that we've seen feeding all the way up here? I, well, we have a drink zone there. I thought maybe it would be, we're pretty far away. So is this a completely different herd then? There's a three star mature, which we could maybe consider taking out. And then that one too, looks kind of gray. I wish we could get it spotted because I almost want to bet that's a two star mature and that would be perfect to take. I think we had it there. He's in that perfect spot and we just can't get him spotted. I think since they're all gonna move, maybe we can just take our time here. Cause I feel like this is a different herd and I don't know that we should take that three star just yet. Best I can figure maybe it's also a three star. So I don't know, I guess we'll take one of them. As far as I know, most three star mature white tail don't reach five stars. The idea of maybe leaving one anyway would be just as its overall contribution to the herd. So this one I think is a two star adult. We did spot that. And I think this one looks smaller. So hopefully that's going to be the right decision. I don't know what to do in that situation, but that's exactly why I wanted to go through here in an area that we don't typically pass through. It was while working to earn credits that I really felt like passing through areas we don't typically go, sometimes doing missions and things like that, were part of the reason that we were running into so many five stars. We had that one video trying to get the UTV where I think we had four five star animals in total. So that was the inspiration. And right away we find a herd with tremendous potential down here. Not only that, we might have the answer to the question. So that is a different herd of whitetail. That's fantastic because we had another three star adult, I think, in the same herd as our five star. And what I thought had happened was we had passed enough time that he had reached four star mature, but clearly different herd that wasn't him that we just saw as that four star. And we may have another one and they're really close together. Now the other thing is, cause I think we're still maybe technically on private land down here. If you look in the encyclopedia and I screenshotted it so I can throw it on screen here, you do typically find bigger animals on private land that's specifically listed in the information for the game. So what I do wonder as we get further towards like the south center of the map, because we're going to be on public land, are we as likely to run into as big a stuff? I don't know, but we killed our five star badger on public and it's very possible to get five stars of anything on public. So going to be worth checking it out, but we double lunged this guy. I did think he ran kind of far as interesting. We didn't get the left lung that well, but maybe it was just the angle. 66% though, as a three star mature, perfect thing we want to take out. I do think of the two three stars, he was the smaller one, and maybe that'll contribute to that herd's overall potential, but let's continue forward here. We'll just work our way right down the creek for now. I don't really know how we've gotten here, but I think we found the same herd of whitetail again. I saw the two star adult. There's some bigger bucks in here, and I'm not exactly sure where they've gotten to, but everything kind of adds up. So if we see that other three star mature, We'll probably just get it too. Also got a random badger down there, but because we saw, was it 60 something percent for the one we got? It makes me feel a little more confident about taking the other one. That's it right there. So if we can get a window up through here, I think we'll try to take him. He should be, I think that one right there. I would like to think if that was a four star, I'd be able to identify it. And it definitely doesn't look to be, you know, seeing it, I'm not sure we shot the smaller one the first time, so he could be even lower genetics, or maybe he's just a younger 
not sure if that makes sense. Also got a one-star male badger running through there. If we can get him, we'll go ahead, especially having killed a five-star badger for the first time recently. Felt like that was kind of close. Pretty sure that got him there. I'll leave a track marker so we don't lose track of everything. And let's see for this three-star mature whitetail. Is it one that we wanted to take out? Having seen the rack a little more clearly, I'd say it was. We ended up getting him just double lung worked a little better with it being more broadside. 61%, so really good to get them taken out. That gives me a little less confidence that that four star is going to reach five, but I think this herd in general, even if it's not the deer that are currently in it, are ones that we want to keep an eye on. So let's then run up here. Did we get the badge? We did. I think a one star adult is pretty reasonable to take out. No vitals there, but they only have heart and lungs to begin with. 57% just get that out of the way, and I would like to think we're going to be spending some time down here, given what we saw with that whitetail herd and the potential for others too, so might as well have other things respawning that might be good. Well, I might call this a little less than ideal. We've got our herd of elk out here about 400 yards away, and just the way the land lays, if we scoot down into this valley, we're going to have a really hard time seeing them. So what I'm thinking of doing is marking out in front of them a ways and trying to circle around and kind of keep uphill them. I think that may allow us to spot them because I don't see any obvious like low star rating matures. And I want to scoot in and see what's there. I also only saw two bulls and I bet there's more maybe down low where we can't see or maybe hiding in there. So I want to get in and just kind of confirm what's there because no doubt we have never encountered this herd before in this area that we just don't really hunt and i mean for the most part that kind of worked now we're gonna have to maybe keep on scooting in because they're working their way up into the brush and i can't tell if they're walking into a rock or each other i thought i had a sound there too like a twig snap but there's definitely more than two bulls in there and that's the one I want to actually identify. That's a two-star mature. He's going to be really easy to pick out. He seems to be the biggest one there. There's a bit of a window there, if we can get ready in time, to maybe just take him as he comes out up through here. That's him right there as he's stepping out. Let's go ahead and drop that shot in there. Looks like pink blood. So that'll probably help. I would say where we are now, probably is public land and therefore it's probably less likely to get a five-star bull but that would be really cool to actually do one day now i don't know if this technically qualifies as primary habitat that's something if you read the loading screens there's a bunch of tips and tricks that are there for you to read and one is that animals will reach their like fullest potential in primary habitat and i think something to the effect of if you want to hunt for trophies ignore secondary habitat so that might be all this is and it might be impossible to get a five star but even down the line when rares and stuff are a thing we're still going to want to manage these herds to get the best of what's possible regardless of whether that's three stars four or five and it's those little nuances that really make this game enjoyable but for what i believe is our public land bull at least we double lunged him at 259 yards little bit of heart cavity damage there too we almost hit it directly but 66 percent as a two-star mature and you can tell he wasn't very gray so he may have hit three stars looking at the white tail we shot earlier and that's in i believe primary habitat we shot a five star not far from there at all so to have a mature bull in that same range as the three star matures we shot earlier i think that's at least a little encouraging but let's go down into here this is obviously places that we've never been you know i'm not sure this might be the same herd of elk that we just shot the two star mature out of there's a one star mature standing there i don't see the really tiny bull but there's a bigger body there that's a one star adult i wouldn't be shocked at all if this is the same herd and i'm not trying to do this we did it with the white tail as well but where i'm trying to get to is all the way down here one thing that I like doing is going to the exploration markers. It kind of guarantees if you've not been to them yet, you have to go through area that you've not been to. And oftentimes they end up just being hunting stands. And those are really good spots to go and visit. They are generally around zones and places that you want to hunt. 
also got some mule deer down there. I wonder, maybe if we scoot that way and try to call in the bull because he's going to be a low fitness. We should be able to call him in. Maybe we can kind of check on both. Unless that's it. The range doesn't make sense, but I actually don't know what they're doing. It's like they're stuck. Maybe they're meant to be going to another zone? I guess we'll take the mule deer because we've not shot one today. Plus, I kind of want to attempt this back of the next shot thing that we can go for here. Well, that'll work. Would have loved to have gotten that other elk and... Again, I don't even know if that's the same herd, but I kind of think it is. Based on the size of the bulls, it's funny that they're kind of ending up circling up around us today. Did that other one take off? I think it did, so I don't know what made them just stand in place. I've seen that before with other species, and I honestly don't have like a, a thing that occurs every time that makes me feel like I know what causes it, regardless. Might have... Might have made a lethal shot here based on the amount of blood. We shot him not through the skull, right at the top of the neck, which is kind of the idea. I Technically, I'd rather not waste the animal as far as when you make a headshot, you get the wasted trophy rating. But should we be off to the side of the neck bone, decent chance it still ends up being a kill shot. 54%, two-star mature, another one that we definitely want to take out. Just interesting the way that went down, but... We'll work our way to this exploration mark and then the one north of it. We have a bit of a kind of zigzag we can do to get to those four, and that'll probably be the goal as we head forward. Actually, I think we might have found the herd. So maybe those other deer were trying to get here and... I don't know, we entered their render and it just made them stop? I really don't know. Another two-star mature, though. This one is a little older, I think, because the last one was still kind of brown in color. Just make sure. Is that a... Yeah, it's a one-star mature. Let's take that for a different reason, though. While we're not actively working to get credits, I wouldn't mind still working to do that. And we've got this one deer management where we need five mule deer bucks under 40%. A one-star mature basically guarantees to be under 40%. So the mission has to be active for it to count. And... Man, we can really see from here. That is not an even rack. Let's go ahead. Try to drop him, and that'll be number four of five. I wouldn't be shocked if we can get it done today, because we're into that stage of the day now. It's about 2 p.m., and I find during their drink times, if you know where the drink zones are, it's easy to find deer, but I typically do better after their drink times, because you can run into them in these open meadows and stuff like that. So we'll see where we get to with that mission, but going to be nice to know we only need one more, and we can get that mission done and get those little chunk of credits. I think it was 1,300 or so. And as for this guy who fell rather unfortunately, we shot a little high there, kind of double lunged him still despite the angle. 30% and I wanted to take a look at this. Really obviously uneven rack and that's the type of thing you want to look for. One of these days, and I don't know when it's going to be, I do want to attempt to play on ranger mode and even if it's just to get one five star while playing on Ranger, I think that'd be cool. And in the process, learning what to look for to work towards getting those five stars is important for that. But where actually are we? All the way at the bottom of the main river? Probably another herd we've never encountered, but good to get a couple of matures out of there. This time, definitely, we do have a new herd of elk, but we seem to be finding ourselves on the wrong side of the wind direction a lot today. And I don't know if it's because of the style of hunt we're doing where we're kind of almost seeking out checkpoints, but it's happening over and over regardless. There's a couple of bulls in here, a one-star adult that's maybe one we could take, but I think this is a mature. We just can't seem to get it spotted. That may work. Two-star mature, that's exactly what we want to take. And naturally, he's going the opposite direction as the others. I think he will kind of circle back towards him, but problem is, doesn't really matter if we can't see him. I mean, that's a mature as well. He just started to take a step. We got a long shot, but that was less than ideal. 
Now, if you spend a good deal of time in Wade Hunter, you probably don't need this explanation, but if you're wondering how, without spotting that bull, I knew it was immature, it's just because he's a lot lighter colored. You can see he's kind of gray, whereas the other elk in the herd were more of a brown color. Now, I actually don't know if this was the same one that circled back down around, or if it actually was another bull. I think there were two matures in there, so I thought it was another one, but I'm really not certain. We double lung and liver shot him though, so less than ideal. 76% though as a two star. That's not half bad, I'm surprised he's that low, but sometimes that is a thing you'll see. He maybe had a little bit further to go, maybe he could have gotten to three stars, but on occasion, you'll get those fairly high genetic potential low star rating animals, and I think there's just a little bit of randomness to it. Sometimes, despite really high genetic potential, they actually don't get there, and maybe that's why the term is genetic potential and not just genetics. Actually, while I'm thinking of it, maybe that's where the primary and secondary habitat stuff comes into play? Because on occasion we've shot, like, uneven one-star adults that just don't look like they'll ever amount to anything, and they're 90 plus percent on the genetic potential, maybe, if they aren't in that primary habitat, they can have high percentage but not actually amount to a high star rating. That would be interesting to know, I have to pay more attention to where we shoot those types of things in the future. Well, incidentally, we've just found another three star adult whitetail. This is 100% public land by the way since we've been talking about that. I found out the hard way that this little question mark is not up in the mountains and therefore fell down, had to respawn, and came to this campsite to try to run down to it, but instead, because we're about to the point that we're going to wrap up anyway, maybe we pick a buck from this herd that would potentially be helpful for the genetics. We go down here all the time, and I've never seen any whitetail really with that promising of a star rating in age, so let's see if we can work with that a little bit instead. And frankly, I think we should look no further than that one star adult. He is obviously not a promising one star. I wouldn't mind if that three star would step out just to compare. Apparently we're just spotting it by accident. We also have a one star young over there. Now I've seen good one star youngs down in the south where we shot the three stars. That's probably not one of them, but we'll still focus on the one star adult instead. There's that three star. That's Fairly encouraging, but let's try to get this guy before he ends up kind of getting behind the other deer. Got a 0 for probably 109. And that's going to drop him. So, really encouraging news on the whitetail front today. We had the 4-star mature down in the south. Another 3-star adult here. And hopefully as time passes, he's going to reach 5 stars. I will be intrigued too, just to see what this guy's genetic potential is. But even still, I think it's going to help with this herd, regardless of what it was. It looked kind of uneven and just very unimpressive for a one-star adult. Right lung, basically only, I'm surprised he dropped. 37% though, like that is the kind of thing that needs out of there to hopefully improve this herd. But let's sell that, and we're actually going to head back to the lodge to circle all the way back to the beginning of the video where we started hunting in the south. Finally, some of this herd management work we were doing paid off on a herd of mule deer, and literally just the last video, we shot a two-star mature out of this herd, and the very next trip down through there, a five-star mature mule deer showed up. Luckily, broadside shot, no big deal to make it with the 270, and we add yet another five-star mule deer to our trophy lodge. That's our fourth one now, and I'm actually pretty excited to toss it in the lodge. I walk through there, I have a pretty good idea of where I want to place it, and I think it's going to look pretty good. Before we do though, that's 100% a low star rating mature whitetail. So we might as well get that too. We're just north of where we shot the one star. That should be a vital hit and certainly from his reaction I'd say it will be. So why not? We'll get one little bonus kill before we head off to the trophy lodge then. And for our bonus kill, we can see from here definitely uneven. Looks to be like a 4x5, so let's see what we actually shot. It was double lung at 311 yards, a 37% one star mature. Perfect kind of thing, just like the one that we just took out, except a little bit older. And now this time, we can head back to the trophy lodge. And basically, 
my idea is to finally place something here at the fireplace. We, I think we had an elk here at one time and it's antlers clipped through the rocks. I tried with the moose and had a similar result. So what I want to do is take a look at the mule deer that can go here because there's two different options, but I like this one. And let's just kind of see if that actually looks decent. If it doesn't, we have the bonus credits to potentially move it around. Plus, it's 260 to put it here as the just shoulder mount, so no big deal. But if we take a step back, you know, it ain't bad if we could have maybe a couple of five-star whitetail opposite it. That would be pretty cool. I like it. We'll still consider a five-star moose there in the future, but it kind of hides the ones on either side. So this might be a decent compromise, at least for now. So adding one more five-star to our trophy lodge, and also finding a bunch of encouraging stuff. Those whitetail, the entire herd down there in the south, the three-star adult that we just found on public land here, kind of in the center of the map. Lots of good things to look forward to out here on Nez Perce Valley. And by the way, a little late into the video to mention this, but we will be heading back to Transylvania sometime relatively soon. I don't know exactly when, but I definitely want to get over there and maybe pick up where we left off there on our last stream there. We finally killed a five-star in the Red Deer. So we'll see, hopefully sooner rather than later we can do that. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.